Welcome to the GPU Trends Feature Spotlight. NVIDIA Inside Graphics is a feature-rich tool that developers can use to debug and profile their graphics applications. In addition to providing a frame debugger frame profiler and the ability to save frames as a C++ capture, there is a powerful new GPU Trace low-level profiler. Let's talk about GPU Trace. GPU Trace is a tool that profiles live applications and gives a breakdown of various GPU unit utilization throughout the frame execution. It currently supports the X12 and Vulkan applications on Windows and Linux. GPU Trace takes advantage of the special single pass counter capability. This capability was made possible by the Turing architecture, which is required in order to use it. So how does GPU Trace work on RTX architecture? GPUs are very complex and comprise of many different hardware units that each have a specialized purpose. On NVIDIA GPUs, there are performance monitor components for each major hardware unit, known as PMs. These PMs give us a good indication of the unit's throughput and utilization. While this ability has been there for a while, in Turing GPUs, our architecture team expanded this capability and we can now collect more of this data in a single frame. GPU Trace leverages this capability and collects this data with minimum intervention of the application execution, which makes it a low overhead, non-intrusive, powerful profiler. So from the GPU side, we trace GPU unit utilization and throughput. From the application side, we track synchronization objects, draw calls, dispatches, execute command lists per the queue it was executed on. Add to this the path markers, and you've got a very accurate overview of the frame execution on the GPU and a breakdown of the GPU unit utilization throughout the frame duration. You have the option of profiling a single frame or multiple consecutive frames. Let's get familiarized with GPU Trace. Once you've installed Inside Graphics, the best practice is to create a new project so all relevant settings are saved for later use. In the connection dialog, choose the GPU Trace activity. Add application executable paths, command line arguments, and environment variables if applicable. You can set up the number of frames that you want to profile. Let's leave the metric set to the default throughput settings. We recommend keeping vSync off for real-time profiling and running with lock-lock to base checked. This will enable you to better compare traces from different runs. Click Launch GPU Trace and the application will be launched. It is recommended to run your application in a full screen mode. Once the application is ready, click the F11 hotkey. For a remote machine, click Generate GPU Trace Capture button to create a new trace. In the trace file, there are three areas of interest the Timeline View, Metrics and Information tab, and Ranges Table. In the Timeline View, you can see synchronization objects, barriers, actions, and markers, and metrics information. The Summary tabs show top throughput information, or you can switch to the Metrics tab to quickly search for a specific metric. The Ranges Table summarizes all ranges by type and correlates the information with both the Timeline View and the metrics tab. It is also possible to add the user ranges. This information will be stored in the trace file and can later shared with others. Here is a trace of Wolfenstein Youngblood before it is released. This title is using Vulkan for its graphics API. Let's observe this trace and examine it according to the peak performance percentage analysis method also known as the P3 method. The first thing to notice is the GPU active, which indicates the number of cycles where the graphics or compute engine were active in percent. If it is lower than 95%, it indicates that there was 5% of the time where the GPU was fully idle, and hence it is recommended to switch first to NSAID systems to see what on the CPU side is limiting the performance. In this example, GPU active for the frame is 99%, so we should continue with GPU trace. Let's examine the trace raise range. GPU active is 100%, so next we should observe the unit's throughput. Top unit is VRAM throughput, which is only 30%. It is very low and may indicate that the performance is latency limited by the VRAM. 
To resolve that, we should reduce VRAM accesses by either increase cache sheet rates or reduce texture formats. Note that on all NVIDIA GPUs, all VRAM traffic goes through the L2 cache, so a breakdown of what requests are made to the VRAM from the L2 cache can really help to understand what changes are best to do to overcome the VRAM limiter. In the throughput metrics mode, we do not have this information. The way to obtain this data is through the advanced metrics mode. Let's examine the advanced mode. So we know what is the limiting range and what unit has a low throughput, but we're still not sure what to change in order to fix the issue. This is why we have the advanced mode in GPU Trace. In this mode, we recapture frames each time with different metric set. The additional counters collected give us a better indication of the why is this unit so poorly performing. To activate it, simply choose the advanced mode metric set. Keep in mind that this is a longer operation, but you can also change the metric set while the application is running, so no need to relaunch the application. Let's see what we discover when we switch to advanced mode in our Wolfenstein Youngblood example. To capture a new trace using the advanced mode matrix, we need to open the connection dialog and set the metric set to the advanced mode. If you kept your application running after the previous capture, you can also switch configs while the application is running and save the time of relaunch the application. You may notice that this operation takes longer time. Make sure to not move the game or freeze it if you can. Let's observe the results. Here is the advanced mode trace of the game. We immediately notice the additional sections in the summary tab with warp issue and launch stalled. Since we saw that the VRAM throughput is low, we want to understand better our L2 cache breakdown. It can give us an indication of what we need to change in our application. The metrics that give this type of information are the L2 SRC unit metrics family. Those metrics show the proportion of L2 sectors by unit. From the given results in this example, the top unit is L2 SRC unit text read. This value means that 84.8% of the transferred byte through the L2 cache originated from L1 text reads. So we know that the best way to reduce the number of VRAM accesses is to reduce the number of read bytes requested by L1 text. By observing the heat rates, we see that the L1 text sector heat rate value is 75% and the L2 read heat rate from L1 text value is 49.8%. This poor L2 heat rates implies that the L1 text reads are thrashing the L2 cache which typically happens because the working set size of simultaneously executing L1 text reads is much greater than the L2 cache size. Fixing the issue, it turns out that the heat shaders of this ray tracing workload were fetching all 2D textures with MIP level hardcoded to zero, a well-known way to reduce the L2 working set size of the 2D texture fetches is to use MIP mapping, because only MIP levels that are accessed are resident in L2 and a coarser level occupy less bytes. MIP maps were already populated by the engine, so all we needed to do was to replace the hardcoded MIP equals zero with some dynamic MIP level. More information of the technique taken can be found in the blog. Here is the trace taken after the fix. A good way for before and after comparison is by launching the trace compare tool. The easiest way to launch it is by choosing the two files you would like to compare right-click and select the trace compare. You can also identify which frames you would like to compare in, in case you traced multiple frames. The tool shows frames one above the other and correlates the timeline. So if you select a specific marker, it will automatically select the corresponding marker in the other frame. In the metrics pane, you can see the values and absolute delta. Back to our Wolfenstein example. In this example, we have reduced the time of the trace raise marker by 12%. L2 read heat rate from L1 text improved greatly, from 50% to 83%, and the L1 text sector heat rate also slightly improved. In conclusion, if you'd like to understand the performance limiters of a frame, you can use GPU Trace for that. 
Once you figured that you are not CPU limited, you can use the advanced mode to apply the P3 method to derive the main performance limiters of that workload. Thank you for watching GPU Trace Feature Spotlight. You can download the latest NSIDE graphics from NVIDIA developer site and also visit the useful links below.